so much. Uh, another victory coming in here for Gamut. Very interesting that he said, I didn't really notice that we weren't playing. Wouldn't think it was kind of just like another voice. And you also brought out, it was pretty much the Diamond show for a lot of that. Um, yeah, I did think Diamond was the one that really carried this game. He managed to make the early game plays, and even in the mid game, he, he was the one that set up all the action in this game. Um, Edward did talk about having that double AD comp, but I didn't feel that Ezreal really performed that well this game, or at least he didn't have the biggest impact. He just laned and never really roamed at all. Um, I would have maybe liked to even see him play a more aggressive laner so he could have helped Diamond secure kills and objectives around the map. What did you think of the build? Because we were watching it together, and you called maybe he should get a Trinity Force and meet some damage, but he went for the Iceborne Gauntlet, then um, the Last Whisperer, well, in the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, so about this build, like, Man Immune first, obviously, to get it to stack up fast, and then afterwards you have a choice. You can go Trinity Force, you can go Iceborne Gauntlet. Um, in this game, I would have preferred to see a Trinity Force. I don't think there was a need for an Iceborne Gauntlet in this game. It wasn't too poke-focused, so the slow didn't really set up into much, and the Trinity Force would have added a bit more damage, and especially a bit of uh, mid-game strength. Yeah, uh, they did manage to close it out in the end. As you said, Diamond doing very well. Pinoy getting some kills in the end. Let's quickly touch on MYM. They are struggling. You played versus them a lot last season. And it does seem really that Mr. Rawls is not a, um, performing the way we used to see him. Yeah, we always used to say Mr. Rawls is an ELO hell, you know, like his teammates <laughs> are dragging him down and he's performing so well in the, in the last season. But now you look and he's not really impressing anymore. He's t just playing his own game, but not really making any flashy plays. And uh, yeah, I don't think he is just on the same level compared relatively to how he was in the last season. Yeah, we will see if they're able to pick that up. But Gambit, four game winning streak, that is fantastic for them. Now, before we take a break, it's time to check in with you guys at home. Earlier we asked, what team has surprised you the most so far at this split and why? And here's what you had to say. First from Ad the Freaky Saint, he writes, Unicorns of Love are definitely a big surprise for me. I knew they were a strong team, but I didn't expect them to be top three right now. They're gearing up on stage to take on H2K, and I said Unicorns of Love came out of nowhere and just in top three spot. Yeah, I definitely didn't know what to expect from you all in the start. I, I really didn't. And then they came on, and they not only showed me innovative gameplay with unique picks, but they also showed me really strong individual play. Um, so they don't only win by cheesing their opponents with like picks that they don't expect. They also manage to just outplay them at uh, every turn. Yeah, and build a strategic plan around those picks as well. Our second tweet is from at Scorch13NLG. It has to be Elements, the most dominant team in Europe last split. Adds a powerhouse 80 carry and falls flat flat so far this split. Well, <laughs> apologies for that one. Oh yeah, it's uh, me being replaced, obviously, so yeah. Um, like I said before, I think the elements, um, their problems, they're still there. The change just brought in a different type of AD player, but the changes, sur the, the problems surrounding the team, they're still there. Nothing has been really fixed, and that's why they're looking further now. They're trying to get in Kevin and make some more changes. Um, you said before that you thought that the Kevin would change the dynamic in that team coming in there with a loss like they suffered it today. How are they going to have to come back from that? Um, well, it's definitely a bit of a mental blow, you know. They were so far ahead with their new player doing so good and then just dropping the ball and losing in a really like weird fashion like that. It was really defeating. You saw Froggen like being really down about it and yeah the whole team suffered a bit of a mental blow but I think they'll realize they did so well this game they did so many good things mm -hmm. the loss is just like the, de the defeat screen you know they actually did really good in the game itself so there comes that realization yeah let's hope they can go off that the third tweet is from at xvbloodvx tweeted Fnatic has surprised me the most I was nervous when I heard four players were changed but they've shown a strong split so far and taking down SK Gaming on top of everything yeah, Fnatic coming into this, I definitely didn't know what to expect because they changed so much. They got new players on like almost every position. Just Yellow started building up the new team. They even got in foreigners, like two Korean players. And you never really know how that's going to end up. So coming into this split, they've actually surprised me with how good their team playing communication is. Um, especially because they have two foreigners, they do manage to communicate really well and they seem to be bonding as a team really well as well. Yep, absolutely. Our last tweet comes from Ad Genius Tro. Definitely SK. Since I began watching LCS, I've never seen them as a top-notch team. They have by far beaten my expectations. There we go again. <laughs> yeah, of course, the by far joke. Um, SK here, you know, last season, they were also a really strong team. Top contender, but they just lacked kind of the individual skill. And now with these two replacements, Forgiven and Fox coming in, they still have the same same strategic prowess, the same strategies around the ball lane especially. But now they just have so much individual talent to add to that and individual outplay that they're just unstoppable. 
Yeah, Unstoppable Fnatic did beat them, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a blow. As you say, they have that individual talent in there. Thank you guys very much for sh sharing your insight. And as a thank you, you've earned your own firecracker jinx skin in celebration of the Lunar New Year. Now remember, you can always stay in the conversation by tweeting at LOL Esports and using that hashtag LCS. Now we're going to step away for a few, but when we return, it is our final match of the day between two squads on the rise, the Unicorns of Love and H2K Gaming. MYF and Gambit have both had shaky starts to the split, but it's Gambit that has turned things around. We do see Diamond is low on mana, but he's taken two turret shots. It's at max. The knockup doesn't connect. It is one for Horo. Cabo shot's gonna get dropped by the next oh. turret shot. Oh. Surf. No, no, man. I got you. Okay, I got you. I got you. you. I got you. Go no, man. Rex, I flash. Go. Fresh. Nice, 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 nice. Got him. Go, 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 go. Nice. Go, go, go. Go, 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 that is a massive crocodile. Corey and Nisbet caught out. Solar Flare hits nothing. Nisbet needed to make that count. Oh, not anymore. It's not Deficio. MYM have got destroyed. Nisbet with the late Solar Flare. They're in full retreat. That's four games in a row. Four Gambit after losing their opening five.